Welcome to V Brown Bank Tech Talk here. Uh, this is my name's John Arashi. Along with me, I have Mark Gabrielski in the front row. Hey uh, we're going to talk to you very shortly. We have only 15 minutes on infrastructure design, and also give you an opportunity to take a look at a new book that we've just released on infrastructure design. For no matter what your role is, there's always an advantage on learning about infrastructure design to so make sure that you have a successful environment running. Uh, we also have Chris McCain, who's also worked on this book as well. This is a shameless plug, of course, but you'll see why later on. You'll get a chance to take a look at the uh, material that we have in there. So my background, I was at VMware for about 12 years. Recently, I moved over to uh, EMC's Office of the CTO to focus on converged infrastructure. I'm still doing infrastructure design. Mark Gabrielski um, is also doing the same thing at WEI, and his particular focus is on the desktop virtualization area, although he touches a number of other uh, areas as well. Um, this book that we have related to infrastructure design is new, and the idea is to have something where we can focus on teaching people about the methodology going from conceptual to logical to physical design. And I'll explain the reasons why for that. Um, I will go a little bit fast. I'll try not to rush it too much, but we'll be around afterwards so we can actually have further discussion if you have any questions. So one of the things I wanted to call out, many of the reasons why we got started in talking about infrastructure design in sessions like this was because of the VCDX program. Both Mark and I hold the VCDX certification. Um, I was involved in the early development stages. We tried to find a way to identify a minimally qualified architect, somebody who, if I, as an architect, I could be a senior architect, turn over my material to somebody who is VCDX certified, I know they can continue doing the work that's necessary and provide a solution to a customer that can include vendor agnostic, as well as vendor-specific information. Um, in the material that we cover in the VCDX program, the physical design areas are VMware-specific. But when we look at conceptual and logical, we do want to be vendor agnostic. And I'll explain that in just a couple more slides. The key thing that we're looking here in the VCDX program, and also for an architect, is looking at your design judgment skills. How do you make your choices? How do you justify them? And how do you identify potential risks that may be involved in some of those design choices? We also need an individual who can interact successfully with a customer or a business unit or other team members, whether they're IT or other architects, finance people, and things like that. It's very important to have that skill set. And one thing I will tell you, there are a lot of VCDXs who have been successful. And there's a concept that that sometimes can be a disadvantage for some people. If you are an introvert, maybe you're shy or you don't feel comfortable presenting, it's always a good idea to identify people that you can work with to practice presenting, practice interacting, having those friends of yours or your coworkers or your associates ask those hard questions to help you get ready for the defense. I will say VCDX program is not an easy thing but I think everyone has the ability to succeed and become an architect with or without the VCDX certification. And in particular, if you pair up with other individuals, that is your best chance for success. And being able to present based on the skills that you've learned as you've gone through the process of design. The other thing that's also important from the VCDX program and for an architect is being able to do certain types of troubleshooting. Sometimes it's technical, sometimes it's organizational, Sometimes it might even be political. It's just, some, it's just the nature of the business where different individuals will have a different perspective on what infrastructure design means. Ultimately, what's the most important thing in an infrastructure? What is the one function of designing good infrastructure? It's making sure that the business can get what they need done successfully. And so what is the primary focus around technology? That the applications do what they need to do Everything else is to support those applications to be successful. So you not only have to understand the infrastructure areas, you have to also understand some of the application uh, concepts as well. What I put up here, I won't go through all the slides because we've got a short time, but the idea here is when you're presenting a design, the material and actually talking to a business unit to explain what the design is about, there's a number of skills that we have listed up here. We have to think about doing peer review we have to think about all the different aspects of a design. So I have certain areas that I specialize in. I don't specialize in desktop. If I was on a project with Mark, he might focus on the desktop side. I might focus on one of the other areas. This is expected in many of the very large infrastructure designs. It's not one person. 
It's probably several different architects with different skills, system administrators, people that are dealing with the applications, the business owners. It's a large number of individuals that you typically deal with in a large infrastructure. You need to be able to work with those individuals and overcome some of the challenges that might come up uh, as you go through that. Um, also, from the standpoint of presenting, just because you can include something and do something because you think, this is very cool, it's great technology, you know, I want to include it in the design, if it doesn't suit the business purpose, you have to think about this. Is it really something that you're doing because it's important for the design or because you think it's cool? You know, in my old days, I was a hacker. Not a cracker, but a hacker, and I really enjoyed learning about systems. And in my younger days, I also like to use always the latest technologies. But that's not always the end goal that you should have when you work on a design. Do the best fit. Keep it simple. Steve Wozniak is one that Mark and I have followed for many years. He always talks about the keep it simple approach to make sure that you don't introduce complexities that don't drive the project forward and they introduce more risk. So we've got a number of other tips that are up here as well. I'll let you read through that. These are things that we found very useful for people who are pursuing the VCDX certification. I will make one other point tied to the VCDX before we get into the infrastructure design, and that is indiv individuals ask me, I've got this role, is this something that I can use and become a VCDX? We have salespeople, we have SEs, we have technical account managers, we have project managers, we have consultants, we have existing architects. It's up to the individual. You have to learn the technology, but there's stuff that you need to also learn besides that, the operational aspects and things like that. So just because it's hard doesn't mean you can't do it. You just need to find the right peer or the right mentor who can work with you and that it can give you the time to help you work through that. I throw this up to kind of give an intro to the infrastructure design methodology that we're going to cover. We've just got a couple of slides on this. But I put a few samplings up here. It's designed to be a little bit confusing. There's some organizing of the confusion in the, the way it's presented. But there, these are some of the concepts that you do have to think about on the whole process. We're going to go into specifically some of these areas in the next slide, and the next set of slides. Another thing to think about is there's this, this term called the Socratic method that Soc uh, Socrates came up with. And the idea is to ask questions to help people think about a problem and about a solution and ways to address different things that will help drive the project forward. And this is something every VCDX that I've worked with believes in, they follow it. They may not call it the Socratic method, but it's just something, somebody said, hey, yeah, you know, as the VCDX, you're using the Socratic method, aren't you? And I had to actually Google it on, on Wikipedia because I didn't actually know this when I, when I was going through school. But it's exactly what we try to do in the VCDX program or as an infrastructure architect in other certification areas, even for other vendors. We look at several phases for the design. We, could, we start at the initial discovery phase where we try to put together the owner's perspective, and we call that the conceptual architecture. The second thing we do is developing a solution, and that's where the architect comes in. They start thinking about the technical capabilities that are needed before they pick a vendor, a technology, a product, or a configuration. Then we get into the builder's perspective, and this is where we get into the physical architecture. We're gonna choose maybe VMware, vSphere 6, working with maybe, maybe you're gonna use Splunk as an integration piece with a particular configuration, but this is where we're getting down to the part of the design that will lock you into a time frame for implementation. The conceptual and the logical, which is the discover phase and the developing the solution phase, that can have a much longer lifetime than the physical design. So that's why we try to focus on that first. I'll add one more thing, though. If you already have purchased a specific version of a specific technology, that's considered a constraint in the design. So you know you might be using, for example, vSphere 5.5 or 6.0, so you sometimes will have a hybrid approach for the design. You'll find that with a lot of the architects that work within the partner community and within VMware will do that. The last area is determining success, to make sure that you are validating the functionality, the operations, and also making sure that you're future-proofing what you're creating. If you create a design that works for today, 
but will introduce problems within six months or a year, and it's not, it, it doesn't give you the opportunity for upgrades or evolution of that design, you need to think a little bit wider because customers, and including some of you who may be in the audience, your environment will be growing over time at different speeds. Yep. Um, the last thing is making sure that you have the refine, review, and um, uh, evolve process. This is not done with just one project. It will continue after that. So real quick, three perspectives, and I mentioned this before. The owner's perspective, which is conceptual, build me a house. This is what this person's saying. The architect's perspective is the logical design. They're saying, okay, I'm going to develop a solution, and then we'll pick the technology once we get the sign-off. Now we've got the sign-off for that. Now the architect typically does this phase. They build the blueprints and the implementation guidelines for success. We've got two matrices that I'm going to show you. I won't read all the details, and I want to uh, let you know on the V Brown Bag site, you can get a longer version of what I'm covering here. So you can actually download that. That's all available on there. But the idea is we have several attributes that we look at across availability, manageability, performance, recoverability, security, and risk management. And here we're showing design considerations and choices and patterns and things like that. And on the next slide, we're showing the actual choice of technical capabilities or specific technologies. Influencing factors are things that you have to factor in. There's budget, there's time. You know, I, I don't know if you've ever seen these, um, it's like a pyramid with a plate on top of it and it balances in different ways. So if you say, I want to reduce budget, well, how will that impact the other areas, the other vertices in that, in that balancing act? I called out four here, budget, constraints, timelines, requirements, as an example. But in your environment, on your project, you may have other things to think about in that space. Now, I'm going to give you, I think there's only about two more slides or three more slides. Budget and time are two things that go across all three areas that I'm going to cover right now. So we've got the owner's perspective. They're concerned about governance. They might be concerned about resources. How do we manage that? The architect then translates it into what I've covered here. Governance, well, we've got recoverability, app mobility, security, and so on. And then we finally get down to the physical design where we're calling out specific vendor products, versions, and configurations, as I've shown here. And there can be a one-to-many or a many-to-one mapping once we get to that phase. The design document area is, I believe, the last slide that I have. And this is showing you, in the architecture design, there are two components. There is a functional design, which is typically part of the conceptual and the logical phase. And then there is the technical design that has the actual details of the vendor technology and the products and the configuration. We also have other documents that may or may not be required for the project that you're working on. As consultants at VMware and at the partner community, we normally include all of these. An installation guide, implementation plan, a validation plan, and operating procedures. I think most of them are pretty common or understandable based on the description. On the implementation plan, that may be training that you need for the team that's going to work on it, timelines, schedules, uh, different requirements that may be necessary to make sure you can actually do the implementation. So having covered all of this in the short time, the one thing I want to leave, it, you, leave you with is what are the next steps? Every one of you has an opportunity to become a VCGX or an architect, whether or not you're in system administration or in other different um, uh, roles, but we look at how can you be successful if you've never done design before? Look at your existing infrastructure and try to reverse engineer it. And then look at individuals who may have worked on the project and compare notes to see, hey, is this what you meant? Was this the reason why you made these design choices? And that will help you increase your skill set. The other one is you need scope for the design. And the one thing that's important to understand on the VCDX program, this is like designing a city versus designing a product or designing an implementation of just maybe an ESX server. We also want to be consistent. Whatever design methodology you use, be consistent throughout the process and become an architect through the practice and the certification process. Whether it's VMware or other uh, vendors, you can do that. 
Now, I'm leaving with this last slide here, which actually gives you an overview of the book that we've got out. Um, there's going to be another person coming on in just about 30 seconds or less. I've got a copy of the book. I've got some old vintage 2003 VMware stickers that my wife said, you should give these out. So I am giving them out if you would like to have one. And um, we're going to do a drawing. I have two VCDX bootcamp books. We'll do a random drawing from, uh, from a pot, but I think what we'll do is we'll let the other people get set up for speaking, and we'll probably just move over to the corner if you guys want to get one of the stickers or participate in the drawing. So I want to thank you guys. I know it was short, but hopefully we'll be, you've, you've learned enough to help you take the next step on your journey. So thank you guys.